does some make that got Amnesia is an anime series that aired from April to June of 2012. And the story revolves around a first year middle school student named Taichi Mia. And um, he gets lost in one of the old buildings of a school. And while he's there, he meets a girl named Yuko, and she reveals that she's a ghost who has no memories of her past. And if the story pretty much is about their interactions with one another, and also their interactions with the ghost stories surrounding the school, and also Taichi is trying to help Yuko recover the memories that she had from her past. It's pretty much what the story is all about. I like the characters. Uh, it's only four, real, yeah, it's really only four main characters, and I like them all. I think that that was enough. Uh, I like the fact that it didn't focus main too much on the characters in the background. It was really just focused on the main four characters, which is Taichi, Yuko, Kirie, and Okonoki. Uh, that's that's pretty much what the focus of the anime was, you know, except for some episodes later on. But pretty much it was focused on those four. Um, there is one like small thing that I noticed uh, Taichi his his character is drawn to it, it, he looks older than what he is because if he's a first year middle school student I can only come to the conclusion that he's around 12 or so you know but he looks older than 12 he looks at least 14 and that's how old I thought he was until I they say he was a first year middle school students. I was like, oh, okay. But uh, the character is Taichi, Yuko, Kirie, and Okonoki. And Taichi is the male protagonist of the series. Taichi is, again, first year middle school student. And he is kind of a curious kind of a kid. He, he seems like he's the type of kid who wants to help, as most male protagonists are in anime. He wants to help people. And, um, spoiler alert here, throughout the course of the series, he falls in love with Yuko, who is, of course, a ghost. Yuko Kanoe is a ghost of a 14-year-old girl who died in a tragic accident at the school around 50 or 60 years ago, something like that. Um, I like her character, too, because her character is really, really really silly she's a really silly childish character you know especially because you know I would have thought that a 14 year old girl who was whose life is you know shrouded in mystery would be more depressed but she doesn't let that affect her and she's a really kooky weird out of there type of character um, she also falls in love with Taichi and um, you can see that just from I mean when the series first starts, you can just kind of tell that there is some serious, serious attachment on her part. Shyness on his part, but it's serious attachment to her on her part, um, mainly because no one else can really see her or the action that she takes. So uh, right then and there, you can tell it was going to be some type of, you know, attraction or attachment there. But uh, I like her character, man. Uh, she's a really, like I said, a really goofy, kooky. Kitty kind of way is a character who I felt like the most sorry for throughout the course of the series, uh, Kyrie is the actual niece of the ghost in the um, series Yugo. And I felt sorry for Kyrie's character. I think Kyrie is a very good character. I think, you know, she is, out of all of the characters, the most real because she has a regular personality. And I think uh, Taichi, you know, he kind of has too much of a superhero personality. Yugo is kind of an out there personality. And Okonoki is a very bubbly type of character, but Kirie is the most normal out of all of the group. And um, I felt sorry for her character because she looks exactly like Yuko and she's aware of it. She is aware of it, and because she has feelings for Taichi, she compares herself to Yuko. And that's something that happens in real life. That's why I like her character because that's something that happens in real life. I see it all the time that women compare themselves to like other people and it just fucks with them mentally and that happens to her. Um, Yuko's grandmother, I mean, um, Kitty's grandmother is the um, the uh, dean of the school, principal, I guess, of the school. And um, because of that, 
you know, he'll go Jesus. Because of that, Kyrie um, has some type of insecurity regarding um, her name and regarding people who are friends with her because they, she thinks that they're friends with her because her grandmother is the uh, dean of the school. But um, she can also see Yuko, but she doesn't care for Yuko as much. Um, Kitty has a very, very stern belief that uh, the living, that, that life is for the living and that the dead should depart. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, I think Kitty A is my favorite regular character, you know, I think so. I think she's my favorite regular character because, yeah, I mean, you just gotta feel bad for the girl, man. She's second best to the guy that she likes, and she looks exactly like the girl that he likes. Momoway Okonoki is the last character <laughs> I'm gonna talk about, and Momoway is, <laughs> she's a ridiculous character. She's mainly there for comic relief, and it serves the hell out of that purpose because she is just absolutely ridiculous. Momoway um, was a girl who saw Yuko in some demonic, weird, you know, scary lights, but that's only because that's how she interpreted it in her head. And um, and uh, Taichi was there to save her in a way. <laughs> it's really funny. But Taichi was there to save her in a way. And um, ever since then, she joined the Paranormal Research Club. And she also has some feeling for Taiichi. But um, it, on that level, I don't think it's reciprocated as much um, on his part. Um, I think that uh, he was just there to save her and that he looks at her as kind of a friend. And, you know, that's it as far as uh, their relationship is concerned. But like I said, she's there mainly for coming relief and it serves its purpose. Um, she's always late with news. Like every time they have some type of paranormal news, she's like, oh, I got a new story, but they've already heard about it. And you know, she isn't aware that Yuko is around. She thinks that she knows that Yuko is to the left, but Yuko is really to the right. She just really serves come relief, and it really is a great plot device to just kind of take away from some serious tones in the show and just throw her in there for some comedy. show goes up and down, up and down, up and down. I mean, it goes from serious to romantic to comedic to just downright creepy at times. Um, I'm going to play various clips from the show to highlight points that I felt like were mood changes in the show. Um, it, it, hell, in one episode alone, it went from creepy to playfully romantic to comedic and then to serious and then back to creepy. You know, in episode um, in episode two, when they first show the history between Taichi and Yuko, when he first meets her, it's kind of creepy. Then it goes to being kind of comedic between the two of them. You know, then it goes from that to slightly creepy again. Then it goes from there to seriousness because she explains what she is and how she has no memory. And then when he remembers something about a, a room in the old building, it goes back to creepy again. And then when he gets into the room and her reacting to it, it goes back to being comedic. So, the music of this show was absolutely brilliant. Um, the background music made it creepy, and at the same time, whenever it would switch over from the creepy sound to the more happy tone or whatever, it worked. It completely worked. And then the lack of music also added to the creepiness of the situation. Like, the music and the sounds were brilliant. The opening theme song, I like it. I like the opening theme song. I think I like the visual of it more, you know, than the actual song itself. But I like it. The, the outro, though, I think that was brilliant. I think the outro really was brilliant. The intro was kind of more of the tragedy, Romeo and Juliet type of sound. But the outro was more of the, you know, the, 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 it really had a ghost feel to it. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it really had a horror slash ghost longing to be a part of life type of sound to it. And here go both of them, the intro and the outro.
thought was amazing because um, they it was drawn in a way to where they seem real, except for Taiji's character. I do have to nitpick about that slightly because he does not appear as a 12 year old because that's how old he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be 12. He did not appear to me a 12 year old and his actions and his mood, his speech and the things that he did also didn't just appear to be that of a 12 year old to me. I mean, he pledged his love to Yuko and that's something that I wouldn't have thought a 12 year old would have even come to realize about himself that he was in love with someone. So yeah, that's that's weird to me because this wasn't like, oh, I got a crush on her. I think she's cute. He genuinely fell in love with this girl. So that was weird to me because he's a 12 year old and the, the, the drawing of him doesn't look quite like a 12 year old. The only thing that they do that might suggest that he was young is that most of the girls, except for Okanoki, were taller than him. You know, so I was just like, okay, that might show that he was a 12 year old. He was a first year middle school student. Those girls are older than him. You know, they're showing that he's kind of on the smaller side because of his age. But other than that, though, I thought the art was amazing. I also like the fact that if the character wasn't important, they were drawn, you know, heavily, heavily blacked out. I thought that was awesome. There wasn't even any need to put detail in the background character's faces. I thought it was good because don't worry about a background character. The four or five characters whose faces you can see are the ones you should focus on. And I thought that was brilliant. I thought that uh, the girl's eyes and faces were drawn realistically. Because I've seen quite a few anime where the eyes of the girls are drawn on a heavily large scale, but here, not so much. Not so much. I like the use of shadows in this. They use shadows heavily on characters' faces in this show, and that really shows an air of mystery and deception in the show. Whether it proves to be true or not, that's, you know, that's here or there, but it, it, it's effective in creating a sense of deceit to the audience, and I thought that that was beautiful. My overall final score on this anime is a 9 out of 10. I will give this a complete 9 out of 10. I enjoyed the series. I enjoyed the themes. I enjoyed the sad moments. I enjoyed the happy moments. I enjoyed the creepy moments. I enjoyed the loving moments. Uh, this was just an all-out roller coaster show for me, and they did it very, very well in 12 or 13 episodes, depending on which one you bought, because they have a slightly alternate end. Uh, and I say slightly, and I use that word very strongly because it was a very, very slight difference. But um, I really have to give this a 9 out of 10. And um, like I said, the only flaw in it was that I think Taiichi, I think they should have made him older. I think he should have, I think he should have been a first year high school student, not a first year middle school student. But other than that though, man, I thought the show was perfect. I thought it was a really great show. I thought it had very good creepy moments. I thought it had very good tender moments between the characters. I think all the characters are developed well. I think the story itself works, you know, as far as, a, it's, it's a very different type of ghost story because in most ghost stories, you can't touch the ghost without the ghost being in a different body. But here, Yuko is just as human as a human. She just isn't in her body. I think that's a very good twist and a very good, you know, take on the ghost story because it's very, very different. It's very, very, very different. But uh, again, this is the Kento Corner. I'm going to try to do one of these every week. And um, I am Bash SMP. And again, I highly recommend the show. Please go watch it. Please enjoy it. And uh, I am signing out. I hope you enjoy The Dusk Maiden of Amnesia.